Hello and welcome to chapter 6, part 1C, the most beautiful biology experiment. As you can see, I'm at the beach today. <sighs> no, I'm just trying to stay sane using insane methods. I hope you are sane too at the moment. Anyways, let's jump into um, where we left off last video. We left off here and the idea is that there are other models of DNA replication and Actually, we don't really, um, these models are actually um, set up as hypotheses before we confirm that it was DNA replication uh, that is semi-conservative. So basically, these are like different ways scientists thought it could work and then um, later on only confirmed that it was semi-conservative DNA replication that was true. Okay, so just a quick recap, um, conservative model is that um, you have two old strands and two new strands af after the first replication and you can see that the molecule is composed completely out of the same um, type of strands. Okay, so it's completely two old strands and completely two new strands. A semi-conservative, as we know, that is true, is that the DNA molecule has one parental strand or template strand or original strand and one newly synthesized strand. Whereas in the dispersive model, each DNA strand has a mixture of old and new fragments. So um, it is really a mix of everything. And the resulting molecules here are also a mix of everything. Now, of course, these are models and we know that dispersive and conservative are not true. But how did they figure it out in the first place? So these two smart fellas called Misalson and the other one's called Stahl. And they actually um, came up with this elegant experiment in order to prove that DNA replication is indeed semi-conservative. So what do they do? They use E. coli, a bacteria. Um, how do you, so E. coli or Escherichia coli um, and different nitrogen sources. Now, um, we know, you know, you should know that nitrogen actually has two different uh, isotopes. One is nitrogen 15 and one is nitrogen 14. Nitrogen 14 is more commonly found. Nitrogen 15 is less common. But anyways, uh, what these two smart fellas did was use E. coli and grow it for many generations in nitrogen-15. Nitrogen-15 is the heavier isotope, okay? Nitrogen-15 is heavier than nitrogen-14. And what happened to this E. coli is after many, many generations, the resulting E. coli would only have 15N or nitrogen-15 in their neutral tags. So, Basically, they all, if you separate the DNA, the DNA will be the heavy kind, will be heavier than usual. Now, after we, um, they have ascertained or make sure that the, all the DNA in the E. coli is heavy, they actually transfer the E. coli into a medium with nitrogen-14, which is a lighter nitrogen source. And they let the E. coli divide again for one generation. And what happens is that the new strands, the new um, newly synthesized nucleotides, will have nitrogen-14 instead of nitrogen-15. And if you centrifuge, which is spinning really, really quickly and separated the DNA, the result is that all DNA is a hybrid and has one heavy strand and one light strand. The heavy strand is a strand that is made out of 15N, okay? And the light strand is made out of 14N. And they did it for many, many more generations and observed um, the DNA um, weight at every single step. So, of course, these are words and these are not very easy to imagine. So let's look at the experimental results. So this is what they get in the first place before, uh, this is generation zero. So this is before any uh, division has occurred. Um, it's still in the heavy 
um, DNA state. So it, it's, it's the first one where all the DNA is heavy because the E. coli has been grown in natural drone 15 for many generations. And then after that, this is the first generation in the light, the light um, isotope. So with 14N, this is the second generation with 14N, and this result comes from um, 14N as well. The third generation grown in 14N. Now, um, you can see here that there is a light, medium, heavy sort of lines here. Um, this is sort of a guideline to see where the DNA is. Now, if you remember, centrifugation is when it's uh, when certain cell is spin or or um, spun around very very fast. And what happens is that the heavy things will sediment first. So what the scientists did was to remove all the other cell organelles, so all the all the um, some membranes, they lyse it, everything, and then they only extract the DNA. So there are ways to do that. Anyways, so coming back here, these are the results. And how do we uh, make sense of these results? Now, before I go into that, um, I'm just going to represent um, the first generation zero. So the one, the E. coli that has been grown for generations inside um, the 15 and as this, this is the DNA in the generation zero. You can only see one molecule here, uh, but I assure you that there might be more than one molecule in uh, bacteria, and it's definitely not linear, it's circular. So this is just a representative diagram, okay? Not to be taken literally, but it's just for us to envision why is it that these bands are the way they are. Okay, so this is generation zero. And you can see that they are all heavy DNA and it's sunk at the most bottom here. And there is only one molecule here, just one heavy DNA. What happens after you grow it for one generation? So one division in the 14N medium. So what happens during the application is that the strands would separate from each other and the new DNA is formed. So this is semi-conservative application. And we see that the results are fit that because these are two hybrid DNAs. There is no longer the heavy brand present. There's only a medium band now. This, and you can also see that the DNA, um, total amount of DNA has indeed doubled. Here there's one, and this is double of one, which is two. And they're all hybrid, so they are medium in weight. Now, how about the second generation grown in the 14, nitrogen 14 medium? Now, again, the, during the applications, the strands separate and the new ones are built uh, by DNA polymerase, and you get this kind of result. You get two hybrid DNA, you can see the blue and red ones here, and the all blue ones are light DNA. So two light DNA and two hybrid DNA. Overall, you have four molecules of DNA here, um, double the number of two, which makes sense. DNA replication, um, the amount of DNA doubles every replication. You can see here that um, Medium, the band for medium here is still present, but there is also extra light band up here because there is half light and half hybrid. And you realize the thickness of both of them are the same. And why is it the same thickness? Because it's the same amount. Same amount of light, same amount of hybrid DNA. 50, 50. What happens in the third generation of um, this experiment? Again, so you grow the E. coli in nitrogen 14 again uh, for one more round, so just 20 minutes. And again, during replication, there is separation of the strands, and then the new strand is synthesized by DNA polymerase. You can see here, in total, you have eight molecules of DNA. Uh, 
two of them are still hybrid. There's always going to be that two hybrid there, you know. And then there is six like DNA. The rest will be like. Now, if you continue this for another generation, you will still expect that two hybrid DNA to be there and the like DNA amount to increase. Okay. Now, let's look at the uh, experimental results here in the tube. Now you can see that the medium band remains because of the two hybrid DNA. There is always going to be a medium band there. And then the light DNA, has in the thickness of that band has increased, increased um, showing that there's now more light DNA than before. Now, they can take these numbers here and they can make it into a percentage. So um, at generation zero, you can see here, generation zero, you have a 100% uh, very dense sort of DNA. So this is a density or we can talk about weight as well. Okay, this is completely nitrogen 15, whereas at generation one, you have medium DNA, 100% of medium uh, hybrid DNA. And at generation number two, you have 50-50. Remember we said there's two like DNA and two hybrid DNA here, so 50-50. And later on, we have two hybrid DNA and six like DNA, which means that it's a 25 to 75% you know, ratio. And of course, if you repeat a fourth generation, which is not animated for you, you can expect um, that medium band to be maintained, okay? Maintained. Um, and there will always be that hybrid strands there, and the rest will be the light DNA. And if it helps, you can do this in your notes um, or write it on a scrap piece of paper and just simulate for yourself what would happen if you continue to the fourth and fifth and sixth generation of this experiment. And you can show me, then I can check huh, if you want, only if you want. Now again, this experiment and the results here actually prove that this um, DNA replication is indeed by semi-conservative DNA replication. It is not conservative or dispersive. Now, why do we say that? Because um, if it was indeed conservative or dispersive, the results we see would be very different. Okay? If it's indeed a conservative DNA replication, Okay, you will always have this heavy band. You can see here, the light band will continue to increase, but the heavy band will be maintained because in conservative, you are talking about the whole complete molecule will be its original, right? So the original N15 one will always be heavy. Now, if you're talking about a dispersive model, then this is the result you would expect, right? If you are saying that, hey, um, the DNA strands will be always a mixture of the new and old fragments, then it will always be medium in density, medium in weight, right? And you always have this band of medium just increasing. But obviously, the results we got wasn't this or wasn't that. It was like this, confirming that DNA replication is indeed semi-conservative. Now that is um, the sort of the end of this little video. Um, it takes some time to get your head around it. So um, what really helps, as I said just now, is really to take a piece of paper and draw it out and predict the results one by one. And then come back here and sort of um, compare your results to the animations here. And you can even search online for more things. Now with that, we are finished with part one. Yay! And I will talk to you um, next video about protein synthesis. So, see you. Bye!